has been proven since time that recognition of one's efforts is always valued more than money. Our institution believes in the supremacy of education. Here, we are committed to providing an atmosphere to our students where they can imbibe all good values. And I am extremely glad at the fact that Masi family is leaving no stone unturned in working towards this direction. And on this note, let us move to our next category of award, Dr. D.K. Tanija Gold Medal Award for Overall PPT Topper. This medal is presented to the student who managed to attain the highest aggregate score of all the graduation years combined and stood to be the topper. We are very proud of our scholars, our distinction holders and to present this award, I would like to request Dr. D.K. Taneja sir himself to please shower the winners with your blessings. And the winners are Anamika Jain, Batch 2010. Indrapreet Kaur, Batch 2011. Dr. Indrapreet Kaur is currently in Australia working as an exercise scientist. We have in the audience his relative, Mr. Arora, so I request him to take the award on her behalf. Adinesh Shah, Batch 2012. Radhubeep Kaur to Teja, Batch 2013. Iram Nas Khan, Batch 2014. Miss Eden. Swarna Duvedi, Bash 2015. Batch 2016. I request the dignitaries to please take your seats again. We bless you and motivate you all to shine in your respective fields and make us proud. किसी भी रेस में जीता तो कोई एक ही होता है, पर इसका मतलब ये तो नहीं कि औरों ने भाग ना लिया हो या मेहनत ना की हो। तो जो कुछ अंकों के फासलों से इस मंच तक आते-आते रह गए, उनका मनोबल बढ़ाने के लिए मैं कुछ कहना चाहूँगी कि कहीं पढ़ा था मैंने कि कुछ फर्क नहीं सब कुछ जीत लेने में और अंत तक हिम्मत ना हारने में तुम मेहनत करते रहो सफलता खुद पे खुद चलकर तुम्हारे पास आएगी। Don't let your today's trouble bring you down. Don't let life's little obstacle keep you away from trying. Don't let your fears keep you away from dreaming. Don't give up on any reason. Believe in yourself. This quote signifies our next award, the Best Motivational Students Award. 
इस पुरस्कार के माध्यम से हम ऐसे छात्र को सम्मानित करते हैं जिसने अपने जीवन की रुकावटों से खुद को टूटने नहीं दिया बल्कि उन्हें अवसर में तब्दील कर दिया द मोटिवेशनल स्टूडेंट अवार्ड गोल्स टू द स्टूडेंट हु स्टैंड अप स्ट्रॉन्ग विद विल पावर जील टू फाइट अगेंस्ट ऑल ऑल्स एंड डिटर्मिनेशन टू कीप शाइनिंग टू प्रेजेंट दिस अवार्ड I request Dr. Pinky Toby Wala ma'am to please come over the stage. We are extremely grateful towards the renowned physiotherapist and founder of Orange Physio Care who is also our prestigious alumni from batch 1998. She has come for this award in the loving memory of her late husband Dr. Bhavesh Toby Wala who was an excel in the field of physiotherapy. And we are extremely grateful towards you ma'am. And now I proudly announce the winner, Ms. Ritika Soni, Physiotherapy Intern of Batch 2016. शाम सूरज को जलना सिखाती है शमा परवाने को जलना सिखाती है गिरने वाले को होती तो है तकलीफ मगर ठोकर ही इंसान को चलना सिखाती है नो वन विल दिस एग्री दैट एक्सीलेंस इज नेवर इन एक्सीडेंट इट इज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ हाई इंटेंशन स्किलफुल एफर्ट इंटेलिजेंट डायरेक्शन and vision to see obstacles as reality now it's time for the most prestigious award of our institution the mahasi blue award this award acknowledges success they recognize hard work perseverance dedication and above all excellence throughout the four years of bachelor's of physiotherapy program the mahasi blue award appreciates the student who excels in every aspects of academic co-curricular sports and shows promise for leadership and personality i request a massive applause while i announce the awarding and the mahasi blue award goes to pavneet singh saluja physiotherapy We are also happy to have the presence of the awardee's parents, Mr. Satpal Singh Saluja and Mrs. Jagdeep Kaur, and I request Ms. Ayushi Devgare to present a safe leg as a token of gratitude to them. together ladies and gentlemen Congratulations sir Before carrying the event further I would like to address the audience about another eminent personalities that we today have with us Dr Prakash Bangani sir He is a well known orthopedic surgeon of M and MD Aryanth Hospital Indore We express our sincere most gratitude towards his enormous cooperation in establishing the virtual operation theater at the Mahasi campus So here by now we wish to present our token of respect and gratitude to him. I request our founder director Dr. DK Taneja sir to please felicitate Dr. Bangani sir. Operation 
theater is named after Dr. Bangani sir's late wife, uh, Dr. Saroj ma'am. The operation theater is called Saroj Bangani Virtual Operation Theater. Sir has also blessed our institution with the donation of 5 lakh rupees. We are very glad and grateful for your contribution, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm profusely overjoyed with the fact that we have amongst us Professor Dr. Bimla Bhuti Ma'am as our guest of honor. She is an internationally renowned astrophysicist. Ma'am, you hardly need any introduction. You have made all of us proud with your distinguished work in numerous capacities. I guess each and everyone sitting in the audience would love to know more about her. For this purpose, I would like to invite Ms. Ashuta Sharma, Physiotherapy Intern of Batch 2016, to elaborate the profile of Honorable Chief Guest. And also, as all of us know, Ms. Ashuta Sharma is also the logo designer of our very own institute, Mahasi. Let's hear it for her. A very good evening to all the eminent guests and my dear Mahasi family. I, Ashuta Sharma, greet you all to the 25th year of celebration, Physio Nova. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the Silver Jubilee celebration of the Institute. Mahasi is an acknowledged institute in the city and we all are gathered here to celebrate the same. Growth and humanity are the two pillars of the Institute and our chief guest, Professor Bimla Bhuti Ma'am, is an explicit example of that. Bimla Bhuti Ma'am is an internationally renowned astrophysicist. She was born in 1933, September, Multan. Then she did her graduation and post-graduation in physics from the University of Delhi. She then did her research under Global Laureate uh, Professor S. Chandrasekhar from the University of Chicago. She worked at various NASA centers in USA on the request of Founder and the then director Vikram Sarabhai, she joined Physical Research Laboratory Ahmedabad and devoted her life to research at PRN. She worked on, at NASA centers and then she has a large number of publications in reputed international journals. She has received many awards and honors both at national and international levels. To enumerate a few, she is the recipient of Fellowship of Indian National Science Academy. She was the first Indian women scientist to get this honor. She was elected as a fellow of the World Academy of Sciences and was the first Indian women scientist to get this honor. She is also a fellow of National Academy of Sciences India and American Physical Society. She had been the director of Plasma Physics International Center for Theoretical Physics, Triste, Italy during 1985 to 2003. She founded the Plasma Science Society of India in 1978 and was its president in 1992 to 1993. She has given innumerable prestigious national and international lectures and orations. Her name has appeared as a role model in different books like The Balancing Act, Stories of Women Scientists published by Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. Leelavati's daughter. Women Scientist of India, published by Indian Academy of Sciences. Celebrating Indian Women in Science, an incredible journey released by the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India, 2019. She is the founder of Uti Foundation and under this banner, she has started Centers for Science and Society at Ahmedabad, Bareilly, Delhi and Indore. These centers were started with the objective to disseminate the scientific knowledge in the society. In fact, the Indore Center is itself situated in our own institute, Mahasi, by the name Bhuti Research Training Center. Through this foundation, she has instituted many scholarships and gold medals for eminent scientists and also for young scientists, in particular women. She has been doing charity for senior citizens and children in health sector. Professor Bhuti, as a super senior, is passionate about her profession, teaching, academics and charity. We, the students and staff of Mahasi, are very proud and elated to have you as a guest, ma'am. We welcome you to the uh, institute and our city. Thank you. Ishwar ke sarkar se kam nahi mana jata. Aap ke jaisi vishw vikyaj shaksiyat humare bhi chupastit hai, toh hum itcha rakhte hai ki aap is karikram ko aur Mahasi sanstha ko sadaib apni smritiyo me rakhe. 
इसी आशा के साथ मैं अनुरोध करना चाहूँगी हमारे फाउंडर डायरेक्टर डॉक्टर डी के तनेजा सर और अधिष्ठाता महोदय संजय दीक्षित सर से कि वे मुख्य अतिथि महोदय का स्वागत सम्मान करें Overwhelmed to have such a dignified personality with us today, despite of all the deeds and endeavour, your endless sheer contribution towards the welfare of this country will always be marked in history. I am glad to respectfully and cordially invite you to share your kind kind words of wisdom with us. Please, ma'am, come and share your words with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Very kind introduction that she has given, and I am also delighted to be here among you, among the distinguished, uh, distinguished scientists on the dais. all the students all the faculty members all the staff members and also the invited guests to celebrate the silver jubilee of this institute it's an honor for me to be asked to be a chief guest and give this talk and i have chosen the topic for today's talk which is close to my heart and as this one says i have decided to talk about women in science but at the same time i would also like to tell you what are the indian contributions in this regard science undoubtedly is the foundation stone of industrial and technological progress of a country and hence one of the founding pillars of its development and economic growth before i start talking about the subject that i have chosen i would like to give you the glimpses of two or three scientists of women scientists of 18th century and early 19th century let me start with anandi bai joshi who was born in 1865 and she was married at a tender age of 9 so obviously she couldn't have had any education before her marriage but husband tried to teach her and he found that she was an extremely bright student consequently he decided to send her to us for higher education but anandi bai was reluctant to go to us because she didn't know what exactly she would be doing when she goes to the united states but like a very faithful indian wife she agreed to the proposal of her husband and decided to go for a medical degree for doing the medical degree since female doctors were almost non existent at that time in india thus she became the first indian woman to receive education abroad and to get a medical degree she turned out to be the first indian woman doctor namely the physician next i'm going to talk about a biochemist kamla soni kamla after finishing her masters decided to go for research 
at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Unfortunately, she was denied admission to IISC simply because the then director of IISC, Nobel laureate Sir C. V. Raman, thought that women were not competent enough to pursue research. Kamla was not ready to accept this. So she decided to go on Satyagraha outside Professor Raman's office and persuaded him to, to get PhD in science. One more example of a physicist, Anna Mani. Anna Mani came from an allied family. On her 18th birthday, she could have easily asked her parents to give her diamond earrings, but she did. Instead, she asked for a gift of a set of Encyclopedia Britannica. So that simply shows how much she was interested in going for higher education. Anna Mani, not only that she got admission in Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, but she even worked with Sir C. V. Raman. So you can see the change that Kamala had brought. She submitted her PhD thesis in 1945 to Madras University because at that time IISC was not awarding any degrees. Unfortunately, Madras University refused to give her degree, PhD degree simply because she didn't have a formal master degree. Our thesis, even today, is in the library of Raman Research Institute. Despite the fact that she, our late Prime Minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, used to say, you can tell the condition of a nation by looking at the status of its women. Very, very true. The Constitution of India guarantees equality to women. However, is that the reality? It's a real good question for all of us both men and women to ponder upon. And I'm giving you, going to give you some material in my next two slides so that you can decide what is true and what is not true. And if you feel like after having made up your mind, please feel free to get back to me and give your opinion. All right, let's talk about the subject that I have chosen. You know, the percentage of women going for science career, even today, and I stress upon the fact, even today is rather minimal. But mind you, this is not only in India, but this is true in even in developed countries. When I talked about these facts, I'm excluding medicine because I know the situation is very different in medicine. But I'm talking of the basic science and even engineering for that. You know, the women are extremely underrepresented in they would they could contribute to work the social and economic development of societies immensely through participation in science and technology. Fortunately, at graduate as well as undergraduate level, women's education worldwide shows a positive gradient. Same is true even with the employment of women, but only 
for low-level jobs. You might immediately catch me and ask me, what do I mean by low-level jobs? It will be clear in a minute. The director or senior professor, you find only a skeleton. Representation of women on national committee, on advisory and award committees, on advisory boards and science academies is negligible. It's very, very unfortunate. And I'm going to illustrate this fact by giving you a couple of examples. Let me take up the first example of Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize was started in 1901. During this period, between 1901 to 2021, Nobel Prize was given to 884 men. Whereas, it was given only, and I stress on the fact, only to 58 you see the number 59, that is because Mary Curie got the prize twice. In physics, situation is much worse. During this entire period, between 1901 to 2021, only four physicists could get the award. Only four. First one in 1903, second one after 60 years in 1963, third in 2018, and fourth in 2020. I'm sure you agree with me that this is simply miserable. How about India? Let me take up the example of our National Academy. Indian National Science Academy. It was founded in 1935 and it has the headquarters in Delhi. <laughs> During the period 1935 to 2021, only 91 women were elected as fellows against a total. 971 fellows, and that corresponds to 9.37 bus situation in gym. Till 2021, only five physicists were elected as fellows of INSA. The first in 1981, second after 22 years in 2003, 3rd in 2013, 4th in 2015, and 5th in 2019. Amazing, amazing. And I'll give you one more example of a prestigious Shanti Sro Bhadnagar Award. These awards are meant for science and technology. And they were started in 1958 by CSIR, that is Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. Total number of Bhatnagar Award till 2021 is 585. However, the number of women awardees is only 19. That is 3.2 percent. In physical sciences, once again, you will be shocked to know, at least I was shocked when I found out, that during 59 years of the history of Bhatnagar Award, between 1958 to 2017, not a single women got the award in physical science. When we saw this miserable condition, some of us, including myself, 
who started bringing out this question to the person concerned, to the policy maker, and especially the ones in CSIR. Every time we had an opportunity, we brought up this question. As late as February of this year, there was a conference at Bhavnagar where I was invited to give a talk and at the same time, Director General of CSIR was also to give an invited talk. And I didn't want to lose this opportunity, golden opportunity. So I made a humble request to the DG that please, please look into the situation and try to find out some solution, some resolution. I also requested him that we would like to know whether women were nominated at all or some were nominated and never got the award. If they were not nominated at all, things are much worse. But we will be amazed to know that till today we have not received any reply to this query. I don't know what to do. All right. So I believe this is enough. A couple of examples I have given to but let me also say that things are certainly better now. But still, gender bias is universally present. Global gender bias is recognized by many agencies, including the United Nations. They recognize that it does exist whether we like it or not. But we have made them realize this. The National Science Foundation has prepared a report as late as 2018. And this report shows that in United Kingdom, women are paid only 67% of what men on even when they are equally qualified. Amazing. As I mentioned, that it has been accepted by United Nations. So what are they doing to resolve this problem? United Nations has created a cell called UN Women. This creation of UN Women came about as part of the UN Reform Agenda. That is, to bring together resources and mandate for greater impact. UN Women was an outcome of merging of some previously distinct units of the UN system. The units which focus exclusively on gender equality and women's empowerment. On top of it, I would like to tell you that the 23rd UN Agenda for Sustainable Development includes 17 sustain Sustainable Development Goals and out of these 17, SDG, Sustainable Development Goal number 4, is for education. SDG 5 is on gender equality. So, I make sure that they do recognize that the gender bias exists even today. I'll give one more example. Gender in sight. That is gender in science, innovation, 
technology and engineer. Gender Insight was founded by organization of women scientists in developing countries, OWST, by the World Academy of Sciences first, and also by the Gender Advisory Board of the UN Commission on Science and Technology for Development. This Gender Insight site was initiated to promote the awareness of decision makers in many different countries. This was done to make them aware that STI, that is Science, Technology and Innovation, for development policy and program will be more effective, equitable and sustainable when they reflect the vision, aims, concerns, knowledge and abilities of both women and men. How about Indian initiatives? What are we doing in India to get rid of gender bias? India is also putting in some efforts. Let me give you very, very brief information regarding the Indian initiative. Our three national academies, Indian National Science Academy, INSA, National Academy of Sciences India at Allahabad, and Indian Academy of Sciences at Bangalore have joined hands and have created a cell for Indian women scientists to look into various problems including gender bias. IASC has brought out a book called Leelavati's Daughters which I on YouTube. Those of you who would be interested in seeing the material in those interviews, you are most welcome to go to YouTube, put in the name of the person concerned, and you will find out what they have done. TST has also published a book for school children. It's titled The Balancing Act, Stories of Women in Science. This was done particular to encourage girls at school level to go for science education and science care. Recent, well it's not that recent, it was 2019 and then COVID started so almost nothing happened. Department of Biotechnology, Government of India, had an exhibition at India International Centre in Delhi to celebrate the achievements of Indian women scientists. At that time, they had released a book celebrating Indian women in science an incredible journey. The image I am showing you here is the front page of that book. I am sure you can at least recognize three faces. This is Anandi Bai, Joshi I talked about. This is Anna Mani I talked about. And this is Kamla Soni I talked about in the beginning of my talk. Let me also tell you that Vigyan Prasad is going to bring out another book where they are going to talk about 75 Indian women signed. Why 75? Because India is celebrating 75 years of its independence. This book was supposed to come out in February around the International Women's Day, but for some reason it didn't come out. But I believe it is going to be out in two months. 
So what are we doing about this problem? And as I mentioned in the beginning itself, that this gender bias is a global problem. But uh, let me not leave you with such a grim situation. I must say that things are improving, but at a very, very slow pace. Certainly not what the Indian women scientists would like to. So something more has to be done in this direction. Let me point out that the progress in this direction is much slower in India compared to U.S. and Europe. So how do you go about it? We need to empower women, not only with science, but with science and technology. As far as I am concerned, science and technology go hand in hand. It is essential for women to appreciate the wonders of science and technology to have better life for themselves and to improve the living conditions of their family. I can go on and on. I believe, even though Dr. Taneja has not given me a signal, but I believe that probably I have taken up the time allotted to me. So I would like to stop here. But before that, I would like to point out, I was telling some of the girls here, that the United Nations has declared 2022 as International Year of Basic Science. And we are very glad about that. And before I talk, I would like to express my sincere thanks to all of you in the audience and also my big thanks to the organizers, Dr. Nina, Dr. Shikla, Dr. Canada, and their colleagues. Thank you. people have any questions? Since the time is up, I would request you, you catch me after the event. I will be available. Thank you, round of applause for her. Thank you, ma'am. You are indeed a woman of distinct vision, a fountainhead of illuminating ideas and idol of knowledge and of course an inspiration to all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. People like to be reminded of special moments in their lives and to hold evidence of those special moments, the Institute is launching its very first box of memories. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as we proudly launch and announce the Souvenir Jubilation to commemorate the successful journey of this institution for 25 long milestone years. The Souvenir is written and edited by college students and teachers. It has both sections of Hindi and English and it includes a detailed report of college activities. The word souvenir is actually a French word meaning remembrance or memory. It brings out the latent talents of the students and thus helps them to form the habit of reading and writing. It also helps them to hone their intellectual skills as well as benefits in widening the horizons of knowledge. The students and teachers get a score to show their creative power through it. It contains poems, articles, short essays, book reviews, and elaborating the photo gallery, providing glimpse of campus activity, including valuable speeches and messages by board member. We express our gratitude towards the editorial board member, 
डॉक्टर स्नेहा जोशी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एम जी एम अलाइड हेल्थ साइंस इंस्टीट्यूट इंदौर मिस रोहिता शर्मा एम बी टी स्कॉलर मिस आशुता शर्मा बी बी टी इंटर्न मिस अमीशा देहाद्रे बी बी टी थर्ड ईयर मिस वेदिका अग्रवाल बी बी टी सेकेंड ईयर स्टूडेंट फॉर लिफ्टिंग देयर शोल्डर्स विद रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज ऑफ मेकिंग इट अब वो शुभ घड़ी आ गई है जब हम सभी दर्शकों को जुबिलेशन की पहली झलक दिखाएंगे मैं सभी अतिथियों से निवेदन करती हूँ कृपया वे अपने कर कमलों से इस सौगन का विमोचन करें Thank you so much, all of you. I would request respected dignitaries to please take your seats of honor. वक्त की धूप हो या तेज हो आंधियाँ, वक्त की धूप हो या तेज हो आंधियाँ, कुछ कदमों के निशान कभी नहीं खोते, जिन्हें याद करके मुस्कुरा दे आँखें, वो दूर होकर भी दूर नहीं होते। और एक ऐसी ही याद हम मासी के पूरे परिवार की ओर से आज आए अतिथियों को सम्मान स्वरूप भेंट करना चाहेंगे और उम्मीद रखते हैं कि इस यादगार के सहारे वे मासी संस्था की और आज की स्मृतियों को सदैव अपने मन में रखेंगे वेन यू प्रैक्टिस ग्रेटफुलनेस देर इज अंस ऑफ रिस्पेक्ट टू वर्ड वी आर वेरी ग्रेटफुल टू हैव सच अ ब्यूटिफुल डिग्निटरीज अमॉन्स आस एंड नाउ वी वुड लाइक टू प्रेजेंट दैम विद मोमेंटोज ऑफ ग्रेटिट्यूड एंड रिस्पेक्ट I request our founder director Dr D K Taneja sir to please present our venerated chief guest Professor Bimla Bhuti ma'am with an expression of gratitude and inexplicable bond that we have forged with her today Our respected principal, Dr. Ram Hari Nina sir, to present our token of love to Dr. Prakash Bangani sir. Please give a huge round of applause, everyone. Thank you so much, all of you. to the end of this program i would like to express my sincere gratitude towards each and every person who has worked behind this program and made it a grand success and with this note i would like to call upon the stage our respected deputy director mr himan shukla sir who has always been such a source of inspiration to everyone to be workaholic enthusiastic ambitious and yet joyous please come with the dice sir to present the vote of thanks aaj हम सबके लिए एक बहुत ही मेमोरेबल डे है अगर हम दिनों की बात करते हैं तो सिल्वर जुबली गोल्डन जुबली पैटलम जुबली ये शब्द हम इस्तेमाल करते हैं सेंटिगली तो ये ये जो साल हैं बड़े ही खास रहते हैं हमारे लिए तो संस्था का आज पच्चीसवा पच्चीसवीं जो रजत जयंती समारोह है वो आज है गोल्ड मेडल्स दिए गए हैं तो गोल्ड का एक पार्ट शामिल हुआ देश की आज़ादी का अमृत महोत्सव है तो एक तरह से प्लेटिनम भी शामिल हो गया तो एक तरह से आज तीनों ही चीज़ें हमारे बीच में देखने को हमें मिली हमारे आदरणीय प्रिंसिपल सर ने संस्था की जो एक यात्रा रही है उन्नीस से लेकर और आज तक 30 छात्रों से लेकर 1300 छात्रों तक का जो इतिहास रहा है संस्था का गौरवशाली उसके बारे में बताया डीन डॉक्टर संजय दीक्षित साहब उनका हमारे ऊपर हमेशा ही मेडिकल कॉलेज की तरफ से पूरा सेवक रहता है जिसकी वजह से आज हम जो भी हमारी डेवलपमेंट्स हैं इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर हो एकेडमिक ब्लॉक्स हो हर सारे में उनका योगदान रहा है हमारे आदरणीय संस्थापक निदेशक सर डॉक्टर डी के तेनेजा साहब जो हमारे लिए हमेशा ही एक एक ऐसे लीडरशिप की मिसाल है कि जिनके लिए जिनके एक बोलने पर आप सब कुछ कर सकते हैं चाहे किसी भी तरह की कोई कठिनाई हो और हमारे छात्र और हमारा सारा सरकारी सदस्य 
दिन रात करके काम करता है और आगे बढ़ता है आज हमारे बीच एक बहुत ही खास दिन है हमारे अगर हम विज्ञान की बात करते हैं तो हमारे जो राष्ट्रपति रहे हैं डॉक्टर ए पी जे अब्दुल कलाम सर आज उनकी पुण्यतिथि है शायद साइंस के लिए हमारे देश में उनसे बड़ा नाम जिनको हम प्यार से जो बच्चों के बीच में छात्रों के बीच में जाकर जिन्होंने साइंस को बढ़ाने के लिए आगे काम किया तो उसी तर्ज पर अगर आप हम देखते हैं तो हमारी आज की मुख्य अतिथि प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर बिमला मोदी किसी परिचय का मोहताज नहीं है आज दुनिया में जो मापदंड मारा जाता है नोबेल पुरस्कार का तो वो उस समय पर गई और जिनको भारत में एस चंद्रशेखर अमेरिका में चंद्रा कह कर लोग बोलते थे तो उनके तहत मैडम मोदी ने शोध किया और उसके बाद जो सबसे महत्वपूर्ण बात क्या है कि अमेरिका जाने के बाद एक जो देश है जो पूरी दुनिया का नंबर दो एक देश माना जाता है जहाँ पर सारी सुविधाएँ मौजूद हैं जो सबका एक सपना होता है कि टू गो टू स्टेट्स लेकिन मैडम मोदी का एक सपना था कि अपने देश भारत में आकर और उस देश को वापस जो जो इस मिट्टी ने उनको दिया है वो मैडम मोदी का सपना था और वो वापस भारत आई और उसके बाद जो है उन्होंने जो साइंस के प्रचार प्रसार के लिए काम किया उसकी जितनी भी व्याख्या की जाए कम है हमारी इंस्पिरेशन प्राइम मिनिस्टर इंदिरा गांधी मैडम ने जब सबको बुलाया सभी साइंटिस्ट को तो डॉक्टर चंद्रशेखर के साथ मैडम बिमला मोदी भी थी वहाँ पर और जो उससे भी खुशी की बात जो मुझे लगती है कि उस समय के हमारे स्पेस साइंटिस्ट विक्रम सारा भाई जो किसी परिचय के मोहताज नहीं है और उनका टेबल पर मैडम को ये कहना बिमला यू आर ज्वाइनिंग एस पहली मुलाकात में तो ये मेरे ख्याल से तालियाँ की गड़गड़ाहट मानते हैं और मैडम ने भी तुरंत ही एक और जो चीज़ हमें कहते हैं कि जब तक हम किसी विजन के लिए जब तक हम खुद पुख्ता ना सोच लें तब तक चाहे कितनी भी बड़ा हमको पद या कुछ भी ऑफर हो सोचते हैं उस बारे में तो मैडम ने तुरंत उसको स्वीकार नहीं किया रादर उन्होंने कहा कि मैं आऊँगी कुछ लेक्चर्स लूँगी और उसके बाद देखूँगी और विक्रम सारा भाई जी चीज़ ने इसको एक्सेप्ट किया मैडम ने प्यार में तेईस वर्ष की बहुत ही स्वर्णिम सेवाएँ दी और उसके बाद समाज में जो योगदान देने का था वो उनका वहाँ पर नहीं रुका और बीटी फाउंडेशन के द्वारा मैडम ने पूरे देश में सेंटर फॉर साइंस एंड सोसाइटी के तहत इस देश के जो छात्र हैं उनके बीच में साइंस का का योगदान आगे बढ़े और उसी के तहत मैडम ने हमारे इंस्टीट्यूट में जो कंप्यूटर्स डिजिटल लैब स्थापित करी है जहाँ पर हमारे छात्र जो है कंप्यूटर्स के द्वारा जो लेटेस्ट तकनीकी है मेडिकल में कैसे वो सीखते हैं उनका योगदान यहाँ तक नहीं रुका और भोपाल में एक स्पोर्ट्स साइंस सेंटर था लेकिन इंदौर में आज तक नहीं था और हमारे पास स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट में बड़े ही स्किल्ड फिजियोथेरापिस्ट हैं तो इस बात को लेकर फिर मैडम ने जो सहयोग दिया है स्पोर्ट्स इंजुरी सेंटर की जिसका आज भूमि पूजन भी हुआ और विगत आगे आने वाले समय में तीन से छः महीने के अंदर वो तैयार भी हो जाएगा तो वो एक बहुत बड़ा इंदौर संभाग के खिलाड़ियों के लिए और हमारे संस्थान के छात्रों के लिए बहुत बड़ा अवसर रहेगा मैडम ने हमेशा प्रोफेसर बेटी ने हमेशा एक इंस्पायरिंग चीज़ें कही हैं और उनके अगर हम जर्नी भी देखेंगे तो आज हमारा सौभाग्य है कि हम इस सभागार में मौजूद हैं उसी जगह मौजूद हैं जहां प्रोफेसर बेटी मौजूद हैं हम सबके बीच इन्हीं सब शब्दों के साथ मैं यहां छात्र हमारे संकाय सदस्य और सभी जो पुरस्कार जिनको मिला है सभी स्टूडेंट्स उनके पेरेंट्स जिनके लिए भी बड़ा खुशी का दिन होता है कि हमारे जो संतान है वो आज हमारी आंखों के सामने पुरस्कृत हो मैं आप सबका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देना चाहूँगा जय हिंद जय रात पहुँचेंगे हम और अंत में कुछ एक ऐसी प्रस्तुति होनी चाहिए जिससे कि इस कार्यक्रम के अगले भाग के आरंभ की ओर इशारा हो जाए Well, absolutely, the upcoming cultural event is around the corner, so ending should be a blast. Siddhi, अगर मैं तुमसे पूछूं कि anthem शब्द सुनके तुम्हारे मन में क्या आता है, तो तुम क्या कहोगी? मैं मानती हूँ नताशा, anthem कोई गीत या कविता नहीं, बल्कि ये हमारे आन, बान, शान और एकता का प्रतीक है. मैं मानती हूँ. अभी तक महासी परिवार से जुड़े प्रत्येक व्यक्ति को इल्म हो गया होगा कि मेरा इशारा किस ओर है मैं दर्शकों के साथ वो वाक्य साझा करना चाहूँगी जो स्टूडेंट काउंसिल की एक मीटिंग में तनेजा सर ने मुझसे कहा था कि क्यों ना हम अपनी संस्था के नाम पर भी एक एंथम की रचना करें तभी से कई छात्र जुड़ते गए और महासी एंथम टीम का गठन हुआ 
किसी देश के राष्ट्रीय प्रतीकों की तरह ही मासी एंथम हमारी परंपरा हमारे संघर्ष हमारे इतिहास और हमारी मान्यताओं का प्रतिनिधित्व करता है The Mahasi anthem has been written and composed by one of the Mahasi students which is none other than my anchor partner Natasha Varma. She has auditioned, casted and trained a group of fine singers and instrumentalists from the college and formulated the team Mahasi anthem. So here presenting to you the most awaited performance of the evening, I would like to call upon stage Aman Jain and group to rock the Mahasi anthem.